Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home automation with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. And welcome to the biggest tutorial in the universe. This is a behemoth at 24 minutes and is the most ambitious thing I think I've done so far. If you're a particularly technical person, I'd recommend having a look in the description. Uh, down there, I've included for you some uh, URLs to each individual chapter, so you don't have to watch this from start to finish if you're comfortable with some of those things already. And if you're not a particularly technical person, those chapters might prove useful for you to break this into bite-sized chunks so you can do it a bit at a time. Uh, if you're not technical, you will perhaps look at some of these things and think, God, that's terrifying. I promise you it isn't. Uh, it's something that you can do. You can't do a great deal of damage along the way. And if you get stuck, you can drop me a comment on the video and I'll do my best to help you out. I'd like to credit Joe Ibsen uh, for creating this code in the first place, otherwise this wouldn't be possible. Uh, and I'd like to credit How to Geek with the instructions that I followed in order to create this tutorial in the first place. So if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. For this project, you will need an Amazon Echo Dot. You will need a PC with Kodi installed on it. You will already have a router supplied to you by your internet service provider, in my case, Virgin Media. They in turn will connect you to the internet, which in turn will connect you to Amazon Web Services and the Alexa Skills Kit. You need those two things so that when you ask questions such as what time is it, Alexa knows how to interpret the question and how to answer the question. If we want to be able to do the same thing with Cody, i.e. request an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine for example, we need to first of all ensure that we have configured Cody to receive the request. We need to configure port forwarding on our router so that the request goes to the correct PC. We need to create an Alexa skill so that Alexa can interpret the question correctly. And we need to create an Amazon web service so that it knows what to do once the skill is requested. So the first and easiest thing to do is to set up Kodi. Uh, Kodi, if you're not familiar with it, is a way of browsing movies and TV shows that you've got on your PC uh, or on any Android device, um, or in fact, lots of different devices. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go into System, uh, we're going to go to Services, we're going to go to Web Server, and we're going to uh, dot this Allow Remote Control via HTTP if it's not dotted already. Uh, we're going to put in a port number here. Uh, I always use 2340. I think by default it's 8080. Um, you can use whatever you like as long as it's not something you're using for something else. Uh, you're going to choose a username, lowercase Cody, and you're going to put in a password, which you're going to choose for yourself. You need to take note of these things somewhere because you're going to need them later on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set up port forwarding on the router. And what this does is it means that any traffic coming in from the outside world, i.e. in our case Alexa, will know which computer to go to um, to access Kodi. So we can control Kodi using Alexa from the outside world. Uh, so port forwarding isn't a difficult thing to set up. Um, you will need to log into your router. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is via your web browser. So I have a Virgin router. I'm going to go into my command prompt. I'm going to type in ipconfig and then enter. And I've got a default gateway here, 192.168.0.1. Um, looks scary because it's a black and white window, not scary at all. All I've said to this computer is, can you please tell me what the IP address is of my router? Because I now want to visit my router. Um, so I can visit my router by going to 192.168.0.1. And I get, of course, the Superhub sign-in page because I'm with Virgin. So I'm now trying to get onto my router into the router's config pages. So I'm going to use my password. Your password will be written on the bottom of your router. Uh, if you have a different router from me, you'll need to follow a port forward tutorial from somewhere else, uh, probably. Although the principles are going to be the same. If you can log into your router here using the password that's written on the bottom of it uh, and then sign in, you'll probably find there's a section very similar. Um, I'm going to go into advanced settings on my Virgin router and you'll get something very similar to this where you can just choose port forwarding and set up the ports that you wish to forward. Um, so there are there are some ports that I've forwarded previously from the outside world and all these do is it says that if something comes into the router um, for this port number then please send it to this computer. So we're going to set up a rule now that says if um, Alexa tries to ask for something to be done on Kodi 
then it needs to be this machine. So it needs to be this PC that it controls. So I'm gonna leave service as it is. Um, I'm gonna put the name in just as something that I can um, refer to later if I need to. Um, so I know what the rule is for. So if you remember, I told Cody be available on 2340 as a port number. Um, and I need this PC's IP address. Uh, so again, back in IP config, you'll find you've got your IP address there. So that is the IP address of this PC. And it's this PC that I'm setting Cody up on, and it's this PC that I want Alexa to control. So I'm gonna put in the 13, add rule. And now you can see I've got a rule for Cody uh, that has a port range of 2340. So anything coming in uh, saying I am interested in uh, accessing a device on port 2340, our router now knows to, port, to forward that request on to this PC. And because we've set Cody up to act, um, to allow things on 2340, Cody will pick up the request and do whatever it is that's being requested. So in our case, when we say Alexa, play the latest available episode of uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, um, Alexa will come in uh, to my router and my router will go, ah, there's a request on 2340. I shall forward you on to 192.168.0.13, which is this PC. And then Cody has been set up to uh, answer with the result and to perform the action. So I'm going to apply that. Uh, yes, I want to apply the changes. And that is port forwarding now configured on our router to forward requests to 2340. So in order to set up AWS, we're just going to install a couple of programs onto our PC temporarily so that we can conduct the upload to the AWS server. So we're going to go to python.org forward slash downloads. And it's the 2.7.13 that you want here, not the 3.6.0. So download 2.7.13. Wait for it to finish downloading and then open it up and run it. Uh, install for all users. Whatever location it wants to put it in is fine. Leave all the options as default. And we're just going to click next, 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 and then finish eventually. Okay, next thing you're going to need is uh, Notepad++. Uh, this is just a simple text editor file, which is, again, dead easy to use, so don't worry. Uh, Notepad++. Download that. There we go. Installer, so I'll install Notepad++. Uh, I don't think this comes with any um, scary ad adware crap that you don't want, so you can just click through. Uh, yep, yeah, no, it's fine, install. And then Notepad++ is installed, finish. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is the complicated bit, the bit that I don't understand. <laughs> um, so uh, basically you need to go to aws.amazon.com, like I have here. You'll need to sign up for an account. Uh, it will ask you for your credit card. Don't worry about it, it's never gonna charge your credit card. Uh, the idea is that this is a developer's portal and if you were developing an application that you intended to sell and was gonna have millions of people using it, you would get billed per million um, functions used or something like that. You're never gonna use anything like a million functions just for you using Kodi, so don't worry, you're not gonna get billed. Um, I'm already signed up, so I'm gonna sign in. And the AWS portal is super complicated. I don't understand any of this stuff. Um, search in the... AWS services for I am. And this is where we're gonna start creating things. So what we're doing is we're creating, from what I understand, we're creating a place for us to upload this guy's clever code. So the, uh, the basis is that Alexa needs the code to be able to understand what you're saying to her and go and do these things. Um, in order to make that happen, we have to upload the code to somewhere that Alexa can access. And the AWS place is where we're going to upload the code to. In order to upload the code, we need to create a user um, who is basically going to be the Python script. The Python script does the uploading of the code. So the Python script is a user of AWS. Um, so we're going to go to users and then add user. Uh, username, we'll just call Cody. Doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, and we're going to tick AWS management console and then click next permissions and then attach existing policies directly. And then you need to search in here for AWS Lambda uh, full access, that one. Tick that box, click next review, uh, and then create user. 
as our user created. Um, it's been given a password. Uh, we don't need that right now. Um, but so if we just click close, we then glow. We then glow. We go to click on Cody, and we go to add permissions. Sorry, rubbish. Security credentials. And we need to create an access key. Um, so it's been successful. It's created an access key ID and a secret access key, and we need both. Um, so we're going on a mission to go and hunt out all this information that we need to be able to upload our code. So the secret access key is that. The access key ID is that. Uh, close. Cool. Now we go to roles. Uh, and you won't have anything in here. We're going to create a new role. Uh, the role name again, I'm just going to call Cody. Next step. We need to choose AWS Lambda. Um, and again, we need to give it full access. It's here at the top this time. So I'm going to tick that box. Next step. Uh, you need to take note of this role ARN. Paste it into there. And then create role. And you can see it's created our role there. Uh, so we've got a user and we've got a role. We're going to leave this page open, uh, but we've got everything that we need from it for now, uh, and we can move on to the next step. So next we visit GitHub and we go to Monger31's uh, section and we're going to use his code. Basically we're downloading everything he made to make this possible so that we can upload it to the space that we've just created on AWS. Uh, using the user that we created on AWS to upload this this stuff. So we go to clone or download, and then we go to download zip. And then we go show in folder. I'm going to cut it from there. I'm going to put it in a folder on my desktop so I can access it easily. And I'll just call this Cody Alexa. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to paste the zip file. I'm going to extract the files here. And then we're going to go in here and we need to make some alterations to his code. So his code is uh, is kind of blank and it needs the information that we have just created from AWS so that it can log into AWS to do its upload. Um, so env.lambda we need to make a copy of uh, using Notepad++. So we go to edit with Notepad++, we go to file, save as, and we save this copy. So we need to go to all types, where it says save as type, choose all types, leave the file name as .env and hit save. So we've now got that file that we opened a moment ago and the one that we've just created called .env. So we're now going to edit .env with the details that we have both got from Cody, um, from the web server section that we created, and uh, the information that we've got from the AWS server so that it can put all this together. Uh, so the Cody address needs to be your IP address. So what are these IP addresses we keep hearing about? Well, an internal IP address is something your router gives to your computers so that your computers can talk to one another across your network. And an external IP address is something given to you by your internet service provider so that computers on the outside world can talk to your computers on your inside world. You can think of your external IP address as like a postal address so that people can deliver things to you. Now your IP can change depending on who your internet service provider is. If your IP address changes, it doesn't affect anybody on the internet being able to send you information because your ISP is constantly advertising that address. The problem here is later on we're going to specify your IP address in the AWS server so that it knows to deliver Kodi traffic to your router. Uh, now if your IP address changes, it's going to screw all this up. My internet service provider is Virgin and they hand out static IP addresses, which means my IP address never changes. If you are with an ISP that has dynamic IP addresses, i.e. something that changes all the time, you'll want to set yourself up an account with Dynu, who will be able to give you a static address that refers to whatever your IP address keeps changing to. So if you're not certain, then pause this video now, go have a quick Google around to see if your ISP gives out static or dynamic IP addresses. Uh, if you are on a dynamic IP address, you'll need to set yourself up a Dino account and then come back and pick this video up where you left off. If you're on uh, something like Virgin and you've got a static IP, so if your IP address is always the same, you can use this. 
Um, if your IP address changes, then you'll need to use Dynu. So you'll use the Dynu address that you've been given by Dynu. Uh, the Kodi port is 2340 in my case, because that's what I chose. Uh, Kodi username was Kodi, lowercase letters. My Kodi password. is that one and then we need to fill out the uh, AWS default region in my case I'm in the EU if you're in the US you can leave that as it is if you're in EU you need to change this to EU West hyphen one the AW access key ID is on my notepad file that one the secret access key is that one And the Lambda role is your user ARN that we copied from the AWS website. So I'm now going to save that, close the uh, Notepad++ file. I'm going to open up a command prompt window, and we're now going to take all of that uh, folder, including the file that we've just created, and we're going to upload it to the AWS Lambda server, uh, sorry, the AWS server at Amazon using the Python script. Um, so the first thing we do is we type CD and then a space and then you need to where you've saved this you need that location so in my case C uses Paul desktop Kodi Alexa Code Alexa master won't do a great deal it just puts us into this folder in the command prompt we need to run the following command okay I think that's been successful so I'm going to run the next command so this has just compiled the data and this is now going to upload the data to the AWS server using all of the details that we've just created. And it's going to take a long time and it's going to do lots of scary looking things on with white text on a black background. Uh, I'm not a code guy at all. I'm very much a GUI guy, and anything to do with uh, black and white windows or green windows scares me immediately. <laughs> um, so if you're looking at this thinking, well, this is terrifying, Paul, it isn't terrifying because all you're doing is you're just following somebody's instructions, um, and you'll never have to do this again once it's up and running. Okay, so that looks like it's successfully deployed. I'll soon be able to tell because if I visit the uh, relevant page on the AWS console now, um, it should show the function that I've just created. And there it is, Kodi-Alexa-Master. So it did successfully upload using the command prompt. So now we'll click on Kodi-Alexa-Master. And we're going to go to Triggers. And then Add Trigger. And what we're doing is we're saying Alexa is going to trigger Lambda. So we're telling Lambda... Um, that it's going to be Alexa's skill kit that's going to trigger you. So submit that. We've got its ARN number here. You're going to need that. So copy that. And we'll put that in, a, in our notepad file as well. I don't think I need any of the stuff above anymore. I think I'm done with it, but I'll keep it just in case. Um, so I'm going to put in uh, Alexa skills kit ARN. Is that... And so we can now move on to the next stage. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to the um, second section of the Amazon portal for setting up Alexa. So we've set up the AWS stuff now. We now need to actually go and create the Alexa skill that triggers the code that we've um, implemented. So I'm going to sign in. If you obviously don't have an Amazon account, you'll have to sign up for one first. I'm going to go to Alexa. And we're going to go to Alexa Skills Kit Get Started. Now I've got something in here already. You'll have nothing. Um, add a new skill. Um, I'm a UK person, so I'm going to choose the language as English UK. The name is whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it Cody. Invocation name is what you're going to say to um, your computer. So if I want to say, Alexa, ask Cody to load a movie, I'll say, uh, put Cody in the invocation name here. 
If I wanted to be Alexa, ask my PC to load a movie, I would need to put in my PC. Um, all in lowercase letters, I should point out. So I'm going to put in Cody because I'd rather put in that for me personally. Uh, and then I'm going to just click next. Intent schema, we're going to take from this guy's GitHub. So remember, we came here earlier on to uh, download all his stuff. Um, the intents are here already for you to add in. So I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to copy all of this to my clipboard right the way to the bottom. And I'm going to put that into my um, intent schema here. I'll drag this out to another window so I can alt tab between them. So custom slot types, we need to um, add in various slots. We need to add in our uh, movies and our TV shows and all those sorts of things. So this guy's made um, a really cool custom slot generator to make this easy for you. So the Kodi address, um, I knew it would be a good idea to keep this stuff. Um, so the Kodi address, as we know, is my IP address. In your case, it might be your Dainu address. My port number is 2340. My Kodi username is Kodi. And my Kodi password is my Kodi password. Submit. And this will go and fetch for me all of my TV shows, all of my movies, all of my movie genres. These are all the slots we need to create. So we need to create a shows slot. So add slot type shows. And the shows are all of those. Save. Then we can add another slot type, which is movies. Save. Movie genres. Save. Music artists. And all we're actually doing here is we're making it easier for Alexa to understand um, us as human beings. She would hopefully be able to find all of the things in your library regardless, um, but this just makes it more likely that she's going to hear you correctly because she's already been pre-populated with all of the stuff that's in your library. Okay, on to sample utterances. So if I go back to uh, this gentleman's GitHub, and I'm gonna go to utterances, and I'm going to paste in all of the information from this window. And then hit next. So the endpoint is AWS Lambda ARN. I'm in Europe. And this is where we need to put in this ARN that we picked up earlier on. Uh, and then press next. Uh, and at the moment, it's still building the interaction model because there is a lot of data there. So it's going to take a, about a minute for that to go through. And then once that's gone through, we'll be able to enable the skill. And then we're done. I'm just going to wait for that interaction model to complete. Okay, that's now enabled. Okay, and finally, we're just going to fill this category out as uh, smart home. Don't need any testing instructions. None of this really matters. Um, and I'm just going to click next. And then privacy, does this skill allow users to make purchases or spend money? No, it doesn't. Does this Alexa skill collect users' personal information? No, it doesn't. Is this skill directed to or does it target children? No, it doesn't. Um, and then I certify this Alexa skill may be imported to and blah, 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 tick the box. Save.
We have done. So now all we need to do is test it to see if I can talk to Alexa and get Alexa to control Cody. Alexa, ask Cody to play the newest episode of The Simpsons. Playing season 28, episode 11 of The Simpsons.